What to do when it feels like the world is against you. My name is Heather Archer and I am the creator of The Grind Culture Detox and I support recovering perfectionists and workaholics to reclaim their power and to reclaim wellness in the workplace and beyond. And I do this in a few ways, first through writing, coaching, teaching, and I want to share and speak with folks who might be feeling like the world is against them. And there's a specific reason, there's a specific population that I'm channeling this message for. This is for the people who know that what their purpose is. They have been recently activated in their purpose. Maybe you are somebody who has recently had a spiritual awakening. Maybe you are realizing some toxic patterns that have been passed down inter intergenerationally that you're seeking to dismantle. A lot of the folks I work with find a lot of their trauma patterns and their trauma responses actually being infused into the way that they work. So this can lead to workaholism. This can lead to not taking care of your basic needs in order to be productive. And a lot of times this is because we have like unresolved trauma that we need to excavate. And so once you realize like, wow, I've been in this trauma loop and I'm ready to break free, right? And you might uh, have this goal or dream or vision that's going to really require you to stretch and like get out of your comfort zone. And I mean this physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. So this could be mean that you might want to quit your job or you might want to change careers or you might want to move to a different location. Maybe you want to uh, leave the, the country and, and try living in a different country. Maybe you want to take a gap year. Um, you could be going through an inner revolution, which I talk about in the Grind Culture Detox, where you are seeking to dismantle toxic patterns like codependency and, um, you know, grind culture, that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, great, right? Congratulations. You are evolving. Awesome. And you have this moment of like, yes, I, I feel like I'm in my purpose and everything feels right. Like I, I, I know what I want to do. I'm going to take this leap of faith. And then you tell you the people that you know and love, you know, and it's really interesting the sort of opposition you'll get once you are trying to break free out of your current comfort zone. And I don't think everybody who does this means to yuck your yum or means to like throw salt on what you're trying to do. I would say 50% of the time it's out of genuine concern. It's out of genuine care. Like, I don't want you to suffer. Stay in your safe zone so that you don't suffer, right? Um, a lot of times people will say they want the best for you, but in their minds, the best for you is the version of you that they have been dealing with up until this point. But what happens when you are ready to make such a, an amazing transformation that, that the old you might not be applicable to, the, to where the new you is going? Um, some people can feel threatened by that. They don't want you to leave their lives, right? And so if you change too much, you might leave, right? If you move if you move to a different state or to a different country, then who might they hang out with? Like these sorts of selfish feelings come up and it's natural. This is a part of the human experience. And so understanding that number one, um, if you are at a point where you're ready to kick up your liberation journey to a deeper extent, that you need to be rooted in your purpose, period, point blank, end of story. And this can be particularly difficult for folks who are recovering from codependency, who are recovering from trauma bonds. And I'll be doing more content and videos on what trauma bonds are, soul contracts, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. But essentially, um, when you're recovering from this, this can make you, you don't, you, you're a people pleaser a lot of time. You have crafted, like up until this point anyway, you've crafted an identity around being a people pleaser, wanting to be well liked, wanting to help people, being empathic, right? A lot of us are empaths and so we are really compassionate. We, we feel very deeply 
And with that, we care about what other people think. And so um, I would say you don't want to lose the empathy, but um, or you don't want to lose that emotional depth that you have. But what you're probably going to want to consider is transmuting that empathy into compassion you know empathy keeps you on a cycle of like constantly wanting to get other people's approval whereas compassion being rooted in love and yet also acting um, from your higher self that requires a certain level of groundedness and it requires a certain level of knowing who you are and the way you know who you are is when you are standing alone when you're isolated, when you were on your own, that's when you will know who you are. And so I remember when I went through this, they call this the hero's journey. And um, it's this part where you like wake up, you know, you have your spiritual awakening, and then you start really learning about who you are, how you got to this point. And part of the hero's journey is going to be people turning their back on you people who you never thought would turn their back on you they're going to do it um you might in encounter like even a type of mob mentality right especially if you're going up against systems that have been traditionally accepted as the way things are and maybe you have new innovative ideas maybe you're looking to, to change things up a bit maybe that's a part of your inner revolution people are going to hear that and naturally the status quo they don't like to hear about too much change it scares them you know they like predictability that sort of thing especially if they're in their comfort zones you know you have to understand that you're you're in a different consciousness you're on a different timeline than the folks that you're talking to are and so this can feel isolating because you're, you're having all these revelations you're learning so much if you share too much with the folks who are the naysayers, they're probably gonna start looking at you a little funny, thinking that you're crazy, you know, like you're gonna, things are gonna make sense to you about like signs that you're getting, symbols that you're getting, insights that you're getting, and all it's gonna do is it's gonna just take that one person to invalidate um, these, these discoveries that you're having. And it can kind of put you into a shell, I know, it really hurt me like this process really hurt me and so I'm going to share some tips to support people who people who are on this journey right now so that um to hopefully alleviate some of the suffering and to um, share with you some of the mistakes that I made so that you can um you know hear it from somebody who's done it one way and maybe I can help you to not make the same mistakes I made during this process so number one um try to 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 spend as much time as you can in solitude you know and so that's going to mean respectfully declining certain invitations sometimes we go to things because we feel obligated to go not because we really want to go so number one stop like whenever you like check for the feeling of obligation right like if you feel like the world is against you at the moment um if, there, if there's ever a time where you feel like you are obligated to do something, really interrogate, like, number one, are you obligated to do that? And number two, um, you know, are you able to kind of, you know, if it's a birthday party that you don't necessarily want to, to be present at, do you have to go to that birthday party? Maybe you're able to um, respond to the, because you don't want to burn bridges, right? So I think one of the lessons I learned was, you know, when I w woke up and I saw how enmeshed I was in a lot of toxic relationships and codependent relationships, my um, my Capricorn mind was just like, okay, just got to cut it off, got to cut it off, you know? And, you know, that can create some hostility in the world. And I would still suggest mitigating those relationships, maybe stopping the amount of face time that you're having in those relationships but like you don't necessarily have to be so harsh about it and be like y'all are toxic this is this and that because they're not going to really hear you because they're in a different consciousness so instead try to see if you have these like parties that you usually go to maybe you can respectfully decline but send a gift but send a gift card something like that something so people know like hey, I'm still here, I, I'm, I still care, I'm just taking some time, you know? So that's one thing that you can do. Start to respectfully declining certain 
obligations, even if they're family obligations, you know, that doesn't mean that you don't offer your support. Just start shifting the way you offer your support for a while, okay? Um, the other piece of advice I would give to anybody who feels like the world is against them, you know, as, as they try to pursue their dreams, another thing I would share is really utilizing the internet and social media as a tool to help you in your personal development, you know? So consider your social media, um, consider the content that you consume on a daily basis as, you know, the menu you, of, um, that you're curating for your life for the day. So what do you want on, on that life menu? And really make sure that you're in alignment with that. And so if you aren't able to be as social with people face to face, just because you're going through your own inner transformation, start really looking for different folks on YouTube or Instagram or whatever your favorite social media platform is, but look for the influencers who are dedicated to exactly what it is that you're trying to do, you know, and you know, they call it like friendship simulation sometimes, which is kind of weird, but this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Technology is changing the way we communicate and interact with each other and how we're in relationship with each other. So you can still get advice, you know, like right now I'm talking to you, I'm giving you a sense of my story and you can still get advice from people like me that you may, you may never meet, but here here I am I'm giving you some advice I'm doing it within a way that feels comfortable for you if at any point you're like oh, okay I'm done with that advice you can move on to the next no harm no foul I'll never know that kind of stuff so that was one thing that really helped me um, you know first I went through a period of just complete isolation and a part of that was necessary but then it gets to a point where it's not healthy because I'm actually somebody who loves like I have traditionally been somebody who's really valued friendships i have found a lot of, of my identity in friendships so having to cut off a lot of friendships over the past couple of years um just because that they weren't in alignment was a very painful experience for me but something that really supported me in my journey was following the youtubers and um, the content creators that were emulating the life that i wanted to have that were sharing the things that i needed to hear and curating my, my my menu in that particular way. So that's another piece of advice I would give. Also journaling. So making sure you're constantly doing a journaling practice, constantly doing a, pro a practice and process of self-reflection and shadow work. And if you don't know what shadow work is, you can actually, I did make a video about it. So you can um, visit some of my other videos to learn more about what shadow work is. But um, having these moments of self-reflection where you're getting out the thoughts that are typically like that typically stay in your heads or that we would normally confide in with a friend, writing it down so that it's getting out of your consciousness and you're able to see what's what's coming out. You can also do the same thing with art and painting. Just, you know, taking a canvas, taking a paintbrush and some paints and just literally doing a stream of consciousness painting and seeing what's in your subconscious mind, evaluating what's in your subconscious mind by observing this painting. Um, and then uh, another thing I would say is if you're going through a particularly difficult time and you, you're not feeling like writing, you can always do a voice note to yourself, right? And you can transcribe that voice note to get those words out. Sometimes we just need a sounding board, you know? Um, and if you're not necessarily somebody who wants to share your story with the world, you can still, in those moments of, of extreme difficulty and opposition, write it out, talk it out, and document it so that it's getting out somewhere. And you can probably use that content, especially if you're a creative person or an entrepreneur, you could probably use whatever comes out in that moment of pain and find ways to alchemize it to get you closer to your goal. You know, uh, just remember that some of our most influential leaders have had really difficult lives. They have had to stand up against, they've had to stand up against all kinds of people. They had all structures coming out, coming after them. They had so many um, moments of oppression and opposition, and yet they were able to persevere. And so understanding that 
also understanding that the isolation can feel difficult it can feel unfair so you know honoring that that's okay and it, it is hard um, but just knowing that there are resources out there and it is going to require you to change the way you consider communicating um, but there is still a way you know you can still go through your inner revolution quietly disconnected from a lot of the influences that maybe aren't in your best interest at this time but you don't have to be isolated right and you don't have to keep it all in so anyways i hope this helps if you're interested in learning more about wellness rituals and tools uh, you can actually uh, look at my book the grind culture detox a link is below it is available wherever books are sold and it's specifically focusing on how to implement wellness tools into the work day and also how to decolonize the workplace and um, decolonize the ways in which we view time and productivity so if that sounds interesting to you check it out and until next time peace